So, a lot of people are wondering why I always delay flex amplifiers videos. Like I post 5 or 6 build videos in a row for all the amplifiers, and when it comes to the last one slash the flex amplifier, it may take months to finish one flex video. Why is that? If there is a reason for that? Or I'm just lazy? I get a lot of comments about that. Lately, I was testing a new build for the last amplifier in Stonewood, the second flex amplifier. Going through all the weird thing about flex amplifiers that I will mention in a moment. And I said, you know what, let's make a video explaining everything about these amplifiers. Why they are annoying to build, test, and finish. Why they take so long, and more. And after explaining all of that, some people will still be confused about other few points. Like why I always use spawn covers for these amplifiers. Why the tunnels are far away sometimes from the normal path than we can use. Why a lot of block offs. Especially in Stonewood. Like it's the easiest base in the game. Why adding more stuff than we usually use in Twine Peaks? Confusing, right? Well, not really. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Fortnite Save the World video. So, let's break down this long weird introduction. And the answer can be summed up in only one word, which is, war games. They can ruin half of your base if you neglected them. They can affect each other's, they can affect other amplifiers, not just the one they spawned for, and more. I know, you got even more confused, but since you are here, give me a moment and everything will become crystal clear. Let me explain them. Let's take an example to make it easier to understand. This amplifier for example in Stonewood. We have three main war games modifiers in Stonewood. The safety zones during wave 15. The tornado during wave 20. And the hotspots during wave 25. Let's explain all of them one by one. How they work, how they will affect your build, and what you need to do to handle them. First, the safety zones during wave 15. A blue damaging zone cover the whole map and four safety zones spawn, which create a shield around them to defend you from that storm. But what people don't know is, during this wave, lobbers and husk won't just follow the amp as usual. They will try to destroy these four safety zones too. So, technically, we are defending five objects, not just one as usual. And the most annoying thing is, lobbers. They will go crazy on the build just to have a spot to target and destroy these safety zones. So, for that, we need lobber shields, extra block offs, and some anti-air traps. Don't worry, even if the husk destroyed all these four safety things, doesn't matter. What matters is the amp. But the thing is, if you didn't consider what the husk will do to reach these zones, they will cause a lot of damage to the block offs. And this will lead for more issues during later waves. Second thing is the tornado. It happens during wave 20. And it will ruin almost everything on its way. It removes almost any roof and floors traps it touches. Only wall traps will survive. But if the tornado dealt a lot of damage to the wall itself, it will get destroyed. And in Stonewood, not many people have that high structure's health bonus yet. So, we need to shift the build and build it far away from the tornado area. But the area is limited. That's why I rely on the spawn covers a lot for these amplifiers with wargame modifiers. Third thing is the hot spots. Like you have to build your tunnel far away with a lot of extra block offs to route the husk just to avoid the tornado area. Then you find a hot spot in your face. For who don't know, I will make it simple. You see this hot spot? If it spawned here, it will ruin everything in 3 by 3 area. It will destroy any wall it touches. And will remove any floor traps it touches. So basically, a 3 by 3 area is ruined. Only roof traps will survive. You got the trick? The tornado removes roof traps. It's funny actually how these two war games modifiers work with each other just to make your life harder. And not just that, a modifier from a certain direction can ruin other directions builds. For example, the tornado from the east direction can ruin the south direction build. And that's the fourth thing we need to know. Number 5 is, these modifiers will affect the other amplifiers too. Like for this one, it will affect the east and the south direction for this amplifier. So, you need to edit and test over and over to handle these modifiers. And all of that cost a lot of block offs. Because sometimes you need to shift the husk paths far away than usual. And the last thing is to match all of these things and make them work together for all the main and random waves. And it's not simple. And it takes a lot of time to test over and over with all the waves and possible random spawns. And the most frustrating thing is, after doing this for a whole month for example testing a new build, something gets bugged or changed. Like the smashers bug when they don't recognize the build. Or the lobbers bug when they go crazy on everything. Or the propanes, and the examples go on. And that's the main reason I get disappointed about certain amplifiers and abandon them for a long time. Like Canny Valley Flex Amplifier. I went back to this amp like 20 times. And every time I'm so close, something happens. And after all of that, you need to consider that some people don't have high traps damage and durability ratios. 
Some people just reached Stonewood Endurance, so they don't have access to 10 god roll copies of each trap, and so on. It's not impossible believe me. Yes, it takes more times than the harder endurances. Like building and testing for this flex amp for example took a lot of time more than building an amplifier in Twine Peaks, which should be the opposite. But it's the part one love the most about this game. I love to test a lot and keep editing my builds. Yes, sometimes it takes ton of time. But when you see the final result, you will be satisfied with it. So, in general, when you see me using a big spawn cover or ton of block offs in a certain area, believe me, I did that for a reason. One of the most important reasons is, I do a build that works for everyone. Not just for me. The last flex amplifier in Stonewood is almost done, I already uploaded the east direction video and working on the south direction one right now. Same thing with the flex amp in Canny Valley, but it needs some testing for the last direction. Hopefully if everything went well this time, I will manage to finish the three videos for it. Then I will go back to Twine Peaks. I know that Valley and Devil amplifiers are a bit buggy right now, but I can't test more than one base a time. But I will post a temporary loop bridge that will help for now. That should be enough for this video. I tried to explain everything as much as possible. So, if it helped, don't forget to use code LARSIS in the item shop if you want to support me, helps me a lot. Big thanks for the channel members and everyone uses my creator code, really appreciate your support. Like, subscribe if you are enjoying the content, helps the channel to reach more people. I will upload the south direction build next for this amp. Here's the rest of the gameplay for wave 25, with 7 hotspots spawned. Hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, see you in the next one. turned husks into fire elementals. Well, we all learned something today.